Okay, let's talk about creating photorealistic velvet uh, in V-Ray. Now, when you create any material, what's important is you look at references. And when you're creating velvet, there are different types of velvet. So it's important to, to really study your reference and see what you're trying to do. Now, with velvet, you get this effect where close on, you know, directly on, normally the material is dark. But then at an angle, it goes very light, and it goes very light very quickly. It's dark here, dark here, dark here, and then suddenly it's light. And, you know, that's a quick fall-off. So you have to create that when you're creating a material. And if you look at your different references, like this, these are different types of velvet. It's still velvet. You know, this chair here, this is still velvet, and you can see the velvet uh, reaction here and how it works, and this is velvet. But it has different properties to the one we looked at before. Again, this is velvet, but it's slightly different. But the properties of being straight on here and then light here, very quickly, that's still, that's still there. But when you look at this, another thing to realize is this is due to the light. Okay, so on here you don't get such a sharp fall off because the lighting is different, but you get this around these areas. And here, because this is a different angle to this back piece, this is again lighter and lighter still. So it's important to realize these different properties and then to try and duplicate them as closely as possible. Now in this case, the velvet which we're going to create is this Zophany velvet. And if you look here, see, <laughs> uh, we're going to get this, this fall off here. We're going to get this brightness and this darkness and we're going to put some of this extra detail in here. Okay, but see here, it's bright, 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 dark. Okay, so we're going to do this as close as we can in Max, and, and I'll show you various tools to get this done. But we can get pretty close to what we're seeing here. Now on the website, this is all you get. Okay, now when you realize that this reference image, um, it's dark, it's light, there's light shining on it. You know, if you look here, this is much darker. Much darker than this. So you're going to have to take this into Photoshop, and edit it in order to make it dark like this. And these are just some other references. You can see this looks quite, um, almost kind of plasticky, but this is just the type of velvet this is. And here it looks kind of plasticky, but it's not plasticky, it's just, you know, that's the velvet. So those are the reference images, and this is what we're going to replicate here. Now, to start with, I'm going to show you the material. This is the material which I've created, which is on there. And we're going to recreate this material here quickly. And I'm going to try and keep this simple and tell you my reasoning between each of these different uh, points I put in here. Nothing here is is extra. I haven't just put something in just for the sake of it. It all has, has a purpose. But I'm going to try and keep this simple and try and give you the details and keep this as short as possible in order to make it so you can understand the workings and how I came up with this velvet. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a material and put this in here. I'm going to double click up here. And because we're going to create this, what we're going to do is uh, Fresnel here, by default this is on. Hang on. I'm on the wrong one, that's why. <laughs> by default this, this is on here. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to give this various properties, which the other one had. Um, if I put here on show shaded material and viewport and show background and preview, okay, if I bring this up now, you'll see it instantly, you know, approximates a metal and you can see what's happening. So, but if I come down to this BRDF, I'm doing this intentionally so you can see what I'm doing here. Don't use any of these three, just use this one. This is much later. And this is much more involved and has a much more realistic effect on the materials. So use this for all of the materials which you have. Now what you want to do though is play around with this GTR tail fall off. We're creating a fabric. And if you push this up, you'll see this becomes tighter here. So if we come up here, it's, it just it's, it's not changing the reflection and it's not changing the glossiness. Although changing those can also have, or changing the glossiness can also have this effect. Um, what it's doing is it's changing this tail. On this so as I bring this down the tail changes and that's all that's happening and for fabrics we're gonna bring this down and down 
And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to bring this right down to 0.5. And you can see already that even though Fresnel is off and it's fairly reflective, you've got this, this is already approximating a fabric. So that's what we're going to do straight off with the material. Uh, this, by the way, can stay at black, and this can stay at one. I was just trying to show you. The only reason I played with those there was to show you the effect this GTR tail fall off has. Okay. Now, if we actually look at the diffuse, I'm going to take this up here. I press shift and drag, left click and drag to bring that up here. Now, using that earlier image, I've recreated this in Photoshop and I made it darker. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into how to do that now. I'm just trying to show you how to create the velvet material and not do all the Photoshop techniques which, which come with it. We can do those if, if you guys want them, uh, if that's needed. But right now, I'm just trying to show you how to create this velvet and how to do so. And, and you can create various maps and, and play around with it. I would download a velvet map from the, from the internet and then play around with it and start working and seeing where it goes. So we're going to put that straight into the diffuse. And like I said, it's dark. Okay, It's not as dark as that that's in the shadow, but it, it's, it's a dark, dark blue. So that's on a diffuse, and then what we have to do is we have to select our models, this one, this one, and this one. And if I press F4, you can see that's what I've got selected. And we need to assign this material. So let's assign that. And I'm just going to press F4 again. So this material now is on here, and all we've got is a diffuse. The lights are hidden in the scene. If you press Shift L, it hides the lights, and Shift C, you know, hides the camera. So I've just done that now. Uh, and if I just open my render settings, I'll just do a real quick test render, just so you can see what's going on. Uh, just make sure it's not saving, and make sure the noise threshold is nice and high. Okay, so that's all we have. We have lights in the scene. And we have a diffuse. And as you can see, it's just dark. And that's what we would expect. That's all we expect from having a diffuse. Now, what I'm going to do, this one here, by the way, the tiling is set to 2 and 2. And the blur, I've right-clicked on there to make it really low. And I often do this with fabrics. And the reason is, if I zoom in here, so basically, the, by clicking on a blur, it will bring all of this, make all of this detail and it will take this and it will make it rough, okay? It's not good. If I turn up the blur, it's just going to blur these pixels together so you get a very smooth outcome. And fabrics aren't normally that smooth. They're normally quite rough. So often I'll right-click on them. Not in all cases, but I'll often right-click on them just to create that, um, that roughness for the fabric, which I like to see. So that's what's happened here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create... The reflection. So when we're creating reflection, what we're going to do is we're going to take, come over here, we're going to go general maps, and we're going to grab a fall off, and we're going to put that straight into the reflection slot. Now, on the fall off, what's important is that you change this perpendicular parallel to towards and away. And that's going to make it towards the camera and away from the camera. And right now we're dealing with this curve here, this mixed curve. So we're going to add in a couple of points, one here and one here. And then I'm going to right click just to move it over to move. And I'm going to take this up to the top and take this down to the bottom. And then right click on there, Bezier Smooth. And right click on that one, Bezier Smooth. All right, now realize that what we're trying to create now in this reflection, okay, we're trying to create this here on the reflection. We're trying to create it's more reflective here and it's less reflective straight on. Now the way we do this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this into map one. And in map 2, I'm going to put this into map 2 for now. Now, the way this fall-off works is, you know, here it says towards and away. And this really relates to other items going on here. So, like, this black, for instance, that's towards. This white, that's away. It, everything where it's 2 is always first is this one, and second is this one. This mixed curve, this is towards. Up here, this is away. Okay, so you have to think, when you're dealing with fall-off, what this means, where it is in relation to these different things here. Okay, and that's just important to understand. Now, for the second map here, we need this to be lighter. So we're going to take a color correction and just drag that and drop it on here. I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to click on advanced and set this gamma contrast to five. 
Now, to get this clearer, I'm going to turn down this glossiness. I'm just going to make this point 6 for now. And if I render this so you can see what's happening now, you can instantly see here that we're starting to get the effect that we're looking for. You know, there's still a lot to be done, but we're starting to get that rapid fall off effect going on here. Now, there's other details here to be added. So, when you're creating material, you know, you go, okay, I need this fall off, but I still need more details going in on this reflection. If you look at the image, so here it's less reflective, here it's more reflective. Here it's more reflective, here it's less reflective. So we need to start putting this detail in there. But we have to have that fall off to get the effect here, and so now we're going to edit and add in this data on top. Now the only way to add that data in here is with a composite map. So we drag that and we put it in here, and we put that onto layer 1. We're going to come in here and I'm going to add in an extra layer. With this composite map in here, what we need is we need this darker map, but only in certain areas. Only in certain areas up here, and we need it lighter down here. So, I if I put that straight in here, I'm just going to get it overridden like that. So I need to put in a mask. I only need this in, masked in certain areas. The problem is, I can't just put a mask in here because I need to make it, you know, so it's little bits of bright and dark next to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another composite, but it's only going to have this as one layer. It's going to be here, and it's going to have a mask directly in here. And what we're going to use is another map. And the map is this one. So this has bright darks and brights, and they're right next to each other. And if I drag this and drop it in here, I plug that into the mask. And I need to set this. In this case, if you look here, this map here, the tiling set to 2 and 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this map, this tiling to 2 and 4. If I make it so you can view this in the viewport, you can see what that mapping is. You know, at 1 and 1, it was like that. And it's just too big, so 2 and 4 is pretty good. You could set that higher, but I think that's going to work out nicely as a mask. Now, again, there's a problem here. And the problem is, right now if I render, it's going to appear on all of this bright and all of this dark. And what I actually want to be occurring is I want it to be occurring on the edges here. I want it to be occurring just on this edge where this fall off is occurring. I don't want it occurring down here and in these bits. And even though here you can see it happening a bit down here, I don't really want it occurring that much down there because even though in this velvet this does occur, in most velvets it's not so pronounced. So, you know, and I want it to be applicable to velvets which you're creating, not just this this, this one velvet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same again. Now we've got this and it's got this mask, okay? I think if I invert this, I'm going to get a better result. There'll be more black, so it'll be coming through in less places. So if I do a test render now, you can see how it appears everywhere. And I don't want it appearing everywhere. I want it only on the edges here. So I take another composite, I put it in here, and I'm going to use another mask, but my mask in this case is going to be a fall-off. So this fall off, I'm again going to set it towards and away. And it's going to mimic this earlier fall off, this one here, although it will be different. Uh, what I could do actually is just drag that and use this one instead of creating a new one. If I press shift, left click and drag, I can take that. And then I can take these out. I just need that fall off. And use that as a mask. Now, again, if I render... You'll see it's only appearing where the white is, okay? And, you know, where this white is here. So it's not appearing down here at all, it's only appearing up there. And that's not really what we want. What we want is we want to take these two, pull these down a bit, or we pull that in, pull this down, and then create another point here, and then take these two, and just drag these all the way down. And then take this one, drag this across, as you smooth. Made that corner. Bezier smooth. I just changed that to corner and back to Bezier smooth just to kind of reset it a bit. 
Okay. So now it's going to appear here. And let me just check here. Let's check this to overlay. So overlay will bring through the lights and the darks, okay? If I leave it on normal, you'll see it will apply it. But it will only apply it. It will only put in the darks. It will only put in that color. And I need the lights coming through as well. So by putting on overlay, I get the lights and the darks coming through. Okay. So if I save this out, I'm just going to stop this. Let's save that out. And I'm just going to show you what we've created here. Before, with just the fall off in there. So this is just the fall off. And this is with the extra details being added into those edges. So you can immediately see those details coming through there. And that's what you want, that's what you need. You need a layer upon a layer to create the details which are required to make a realistic material. Now to make this more realistic, I'm actually going to put a mask on here. So it's only coming through in certain places because this here is very uniform. It's repeating again and again and again and again. And even though I like it, I like the details, you can see the same thing here, the same thing there is coming through. And so we can break that up. And what I'm going to use in this case, I'm going to use a Birkin noise map. And these can be downloaded from GitHub. Um, if you just Google GitHub Birkin noise, you'll find them and you can download it from there. And I'm going to make some changes here very quickly. We're going to make... If I plug this straight into the diffuse, take off the reflection and click render you'll see the default Birkin noise and so that's the default and that's not really going to work very well so what we're going to do is change this size to 50 and what this low does you see here it brings the darks up so it makes it more dark. And this brings the lights down. So it makes it more light and creates additional contrast. You can affect the contrast between the lights and the darks here by doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the low at 0.69. And we're going to set the high up here at 0.7. So it's only going to show in a few places. Uh, but there's intense contrast. So where the black is, it won't be. And where the white is, it will be. And I'm going to put that in there. And put that into the reflection. Okay. If I actually, if I put this straight into diffuse. And then render. You'll be able to see right here. What, are you, what we've created. So additionally here. I need some more details here going on. So we're going to change this. And we're going to make this simplex 3D. And we're going to put in a, a noise. You know, we're going to get some fractalness going on here. And so what we're going to do is, you can go through these, and you should go through them and see what they are. But I'm going to use FBM. And we're going to change the levels as well. But just so you can see what's happened here, we've got all of this detail here coming through. So I'm going to take this, these levels, and I'm going to punch this up to 7. And basically, what this does is, if you set it at 1... You just get one layer of noise. And if you set it at two, it overlays another one on top of that. And set it at three, it puts another one on top of that. So seven is, you know, that's quite high. That's pretty good. You get seven layers of noise, one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. And you can see here that this is, you know, quite an involved noise here. And if I was doing higher resolution, you'd really be seeing a lot of detail coming through there. So the whites here are where the map's going to show through. And the blacks are where it isn't going to show through. So... We punch this in, punch that up there, and then we just do a quick render. You can immediately see you're still getting the detail, but it's not quite so mad. It's not going everywhere. So we're just going to save that one out. And you can adjust the mask if you like. I'm going to leave it at like this. But you can see here, you're getting the, this mask where it's showing and where it isn't showing. And, you know, we've got a bitmap and we've got a procedural texture, one on top of the other. 
And so that's coming along really nicely here. There's still some more details to be added. We've got, you know, another layer or two to put here into the reflection, and then we've got bump to talk about and things like that. Okay. I'm going to click here on the plus, add another layer. All right, so the other thing here which we need to add is if you look here on this image, you can see it's not reflective here on these lines. So we need to bring in another map, just taking these lines and making them not reflective. And I've created that map already. And this is the map which we're going to use, this one here. Okay, this is one which we're going to use for displacement. But this is the one we're going to use for this. And I'm just going to drag and drop that in there. And this one I'm going to set the blur here at 0.5. Because I want it to be fairly sharp, but it doesn't need to be, you know, create that fabric effect like the others are creating. And I'm going to put that straight into layer 3. And we're going to change this to multiply. And then what's important here is that it has the same mapping as this one, you know, because these are created the same size, that one, and that one. So we need them just sitting on top of each other perfectly. And this one here, the tiling is 2 and 2, so we're just going to set this tiling at 2 and 2. And then what will happen is they'll sit together nicely, and that's a multiply. So if I click render now, you'll start seeing it. It doesn't come through in these areas. And it's just blocking off that reflection right there. Uh, if I bring up the render settings, if I increase this to like 3000, and then we're just going to do a region here. Just so you can see closer what's occurring here. So you can see what's happening and what's going on. And the reason with this, the reason this has holes in it in the middle here, is because if you look at the reference images, you see here, you see how it's more reflective here in the middle. It's not reflective here, it's not reflective there, but it is reflective in the middle. That's why this is reflective in the middle, but not here on the edges. Okay, so look, we're going to create the reflection glossiness here for this. Uh, and I've just tweaked this, I've just moved these around a little bit and this fall off, I've just adjusted this slightly here. I uh, just to get it closer to what I'm what I'm looking at and what I want. And I'm just paying attention here to this. Again we need to fall off. You know we've got Fresnel turned off. So we need to add in, you know, this is turned off. So we need to add a, a fall off in here into the reflection glossiness to mimic this and to put this correctly. So it just goes in there, and we're going to bring this up to about here, and right click there and just bring that down, Bezier Smooth, something like this, okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a composite, because again, layer 1, and we're just going to add in an extra layer, change that to multiply, and I'm going to put this in here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to say, okay, let's make this 50%. Because I know that it's just going to be too... Like, no reflection at all happening in those edges is not going to look good. And we're just going to render. And you can see this coming together here. Now, I'll tell you one thing which I'm going to add. Which wasn't on my original material, but I think it's going to look pretty awesome. Is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to put one more layer in here. Okay, I'm going to drag this layer 4 down here. So it's under uh, this multiply layer. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing which we've done here. But instead of this bitmap, I'm going to use this one. So we're going to take this. Just click here and click shift. Press shift. Sorry, control on these. So i got both of those. And then press shift and drag and then plug that one into there and then plug that into layer 3 and then plug that noise actually I'm going to press shift on this noise and move it here and I'm going to plug that into layer 3 mask and then what I'm going to do 
let's just reduce this down to 40. Just so it's different and it, it interferes with the other one. And now if we click render again, let's see if this looks any better. No, because I haven't told this layer what I want it to be. And it's like on normal. And we're going to have to change that to overlay. And then if I click render. Again, I'm not quite seeing the effect I want, I don't believe. Let's see. Let's save that. And then I can turn this layer off here. And render. I believe there's hardly any difference. But I might be completely wrong. So I'll just give this a second. Stop it at about the same place. Okay, let's check this out. Save that. Make it A, B. Yeah. That's what I was fearing. <laughs> I'm seeing hardly any difference. And the reason is we've set this to overlay, we've left this at 100. What we need to do is not use overlay, but use screen. And we're still getting nothing. This fall off here needs to change. If I take it out of there, and then I press render, okay. This is the process I go through when I'm tr creating these materials. I'm like, this should do this. Okay, that's not working. Okay, let's figure out what's going on here and what's happening. So we have layer two. I want the extra brightness in. Okay, we've got this, and we've got it masked off by that. And this is going into layer three, and layer three is set to screen, which should be brightening it. We've taken the fall off off. So if we've just got that, and we take this off, and we're still seeing nothing. Oh, we've got it turned off here. But it's still not doing anything even turned off. Okay, let's just do a quick render and see. Sometimes you can't see it there, but you can see it here. Okay. All that's happening here is it's too dark. I can see more blue coming through here. So... This color correction here is too dark, so we're going to take this down. We're going to plug it into layer 3. And we're going to change this, just make it 10. And you'll see this will make a massive difference. Okay, not a massive difference, but some. Let's try 50 for fun. It's interesting, you know. Layer 3 sets Spotlight. If I set that to normal, it does that. So that's what we're going to use. We're not going to use Screen or something else, I don't think. You know, if I set it to Screen... Okay, Screen works. And if I set this back down to 5... Yeah, that works. It's brighter. And if I plug this one straight in, which is effectively the same thing I've done here. Fantastic. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this color correction and we're plugging it in here and it's got exactly the same bitmap as a mask as before. And we're plugging that into layer 3. And with this mask on you can see immediately here what it's doing. And now what we need is we need a fall off like this. But if I plug that in there, you know, if I turn that off, if I put it in, you can see kind of what's going on there. If I render, you can see it's just too much. And if I put the noise, this Birkin noise here, back in on there, you can see all the detail here being added in. But this is really, it's, it's too much. See if I make it viewable. 
This isn't the scale it's actually at, but it gives you an idea. I set this down to 20, 10. I'm trying to see what's going on. Five. And there's too much white, so I need to bring the white. I need to push the low up higher and push this white up. Let's push that white up to eight and push this up to seven, nine. Let's push this up to point nine and put this at 0.95 and let's make this 1 and this 0.98 okay and now if I render oh, escape let's set the size back to let's set it to 30 okay you can see here we're getting small touches of detail being added in that's what I'm looking at see this little white bits here These little bits here, these little bits here. This is what's being added. So we've got the darker bits coming through, and now we've got the lighter bits coming through as well. Now, the only thing I don't like about these lighter bits is I think they're too light. So, you know, let's just take a little region like this. And... I'm just going to take this color correction and go, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce this amount here. It's coming through at 100%, so let's reduce that down to, say, 50%. And then let's render that little, little region. And you see that's much less. Okay, I can live with that. That's great. Subtle, it's there. But you, you, you don't really pay attention to it. And that's normally what you want with, you know, the details. You want them there, but you don't want them not really being paid attention to. And what we can do is we can take this darkness, we can say, well, that's too too dark as well. So we're going to reduce this, and let's try 70. And so you can see the, the thought principle here and what's going on. It's like, let's add in this detail, let's add in that detail. But let's not draw too much attention to it. And that's what you do when you're creating materials, when you're doing anything in Max. You don't want to be drawing too much attention to things, but you do want them to look correct. All right, so we've got the reflection glossiness in there. And we've got, uh, sorry, we've got, uh, <laughs> I was looking here at this missing layer, um, which is meant to have this in here. So we've got our reflection, we've got our reflection glossiness. Now, bump is going to be a little bit different. Um, Again, we're going to use a bitmap, and we're going to use one which we've created. And we're actually going to use displacement on this. But the reason we're going to use, use a bump map in here is simply because we want to get a roughness on top of the displacement. And I want it to look correct. So if I just put a displacement in, I'll show you. And then you can see the difference. I select these three, I come in here put a V-Ray Displacement modifier on. Okay, I have to come into my maps and it's going to be this one. Drag that, put it over here. You know, this is this one I showed you before. Now I've made this blurry intentionally because I'm using it for displacement and I don't want it to be too... If it's... With displacement, white is up black is down and if it's too exact on these lines you can get you know the pixels uh, look jagged it looks fake it looks wrong so normally for displacement I'm gonna blur it slightly not always but that's normally the rule which I use now it's important here in the tiling that these match so we're gonna set that to two and two and I'm still gonna knock this blur down to point I'm even gonna go down to point one but I know that's not gonna create you know JPEG artifacts for me and stuff like this but I'm Plug that straight into the map. Instance. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Amount. So this is coming up two millimeters. I'm using millimeters in this scene. You know, if you go uh, customize unit setup system right here, I'm using millimeters. And this keeps turning off for me for some reason. But this is just a display unit scale. So that's on millimeters. And this here is on millimeters. Now, it's coming up two millimeters, and shift is to get it to go down the other way, 
when you're doing something like this, you don't really want to be bringing it downwards. Uh, because then you can end up with intersecting faces. And intersecting faces are going to render out looking like metal. Um, we can use this, leave this at 4. This is fine. And then make sure this is checked. And just right click here on the edge threshold. Get that down really low. And if I render now. You'll see it takes a little bit longer <laughs> to generate the, the geometry and build these chairs. But you'll also see that starts looking pretty nice. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a region like this. And occasionally what I'll do is I'll go higher than I'm going to do my final render. Uh, just so I can see details which will be appearing and make sure those details are, are appearing correctly. So if I render out just this one little region here, I'm just trying to show you the bump and how I figured out the bump and what I'm doing with the bump. All right, I'm going to save this. So you see how smooth this is? And I don't really want it that smooth. I want it smooth, I just don't want it that smooth. So the displacement's bringing it up, but now I need to add a bump into this to make this look correct. Okay, so for the bump, I've created this map here. This one here. And it will push the darks down and the whites up. And it's got a lot of detail here on these little bits here. So I'm just going to drag that and drop it in here. And plug that into the bump. I don't need this bump up very high. You know, I'm not trying to push the whole pattern up and down. So I can just click on the maps and I'm going to set this down here to 3. And then what I'm going to do is take this tiling set this to 2 and 2 and then I'm going to right click on the blur and make it 0 0.001 and that's going to add in uh, the detail here which I like now when I render this out you can see here just a slight difference not a massive difference but a slight one so what I can do is push that bump amount up Let's push this up to 10. I don't want to have too much effect going on here. I want to have some. If you remember the reference images, you know, you can see something going on here and happening here, but it's still fairly smooth. And that's what I'm trying to replicate here. All right. When you get no apparent difference happening here, what you can do is just come in here and whack your bump level way up. Let's try 100. And you can instantly see here, this is doing something. But if we don't see any difference here in the render, we'll just whack it up to 1,000 and see what happens. So all it's doing here is it's making it so, pushing it out so much that it's losing control of which angle this geometry is looking at us from. And that's partly because, you know, I've reduced the blur here on it. If I set this back to 1, you'll see this now knows what it's doing again. But I prefer having it there, and, and we're going to take this. So we know it's working properly. So we're going to, let's try 20. You know, 10 didn't work, did it? And 100 was way too much, so let's try 20. If 20 doesn't work, we'll you know, chuck it up to 50, go halfway, and see how that comes out. I think that's looking better. It's doing something, it's not getting lost. We can try this at 50. See there, it starts getting lost. 30. I think 30 is going to be the magic number here for this. What we have here is I want, I want to add in some extra detail here into the bump. So I'm going to take another map here and we're going to drop this in. And this is wrinkles here. This looks like this. Okay. And if we take this and we just grab a mix map, put it on there. And we're going to put that in as color one. And I'm going to put this one here as color too. And then it's just a matter of how you mix these together. For the tiling, I don't want this to be tiling across there, so 
fight put show shaded material in viewport here. And I can make this fairly large, you see, so you just get these large wrinkle bump going on here. Now how are we gonna mix this? You know, if you take your mix map, you've got your mix amount here and you can just drag this up and it goes up to a hundred and it just basically mixes you know, how much do you have one and how much do you have the other? And we're going to mix these at about 55. And we're going to turn on this curve and use the curve. And this can be used to, you know, how much do these mix together. And you can mix them nicely here using this curve. So what we're going to do is just set that to 0 0.1 and let's bring this up to about there. I want to mainly see this one, you know, but the other one's also important to see the wrinkles. And the wrinkles are just going to add some extra detail in here. If I bring this down so you can see, and you see like right here you've got this line coming through here. And so you still get that line, but only barely but it, it does bring in detail, it does bring in a change, but not a massive change. And that's what I'm using this for, that's that's what I want to be seeing here. And then also what I'm going to do is just bring this blur, just bring this out to point 0.1. Alright, and now if we click render. Alright, so you can see the detail coming through, this bump's working nicely. So, we're going to do a final render here. And that's it, that's how you create advanced material. There's one other thing, advanced velvet material. Now there's one other thing here which I want to go over with you, and if you saw my earlier velvet material, you know, you'll have seen me go, look, if you want to create velvet, what I would do is just put a fall off here in the diffuse, and put this into map 1, and basically just drag this, put that into map 2, let's just make this simple so you guys aren't getting confused. I mean, I don't think most of you will get confused, but just keep it simple. I basically said, do that. You know, take your reflection, make it black, turn off your reflective glossiness. And what we were doing here with this material, okay, is it was very simply, we were faking reflection. Even though I can come along and I can take all of this and I go, this is how you create perfect velvet. This is replicates this, this replicates that, da da da. I don't want you to forget that you can just as easily use a velvet like this and this can look nice and this can pass and if you look here at the rendering speed right I know it's doing the light cache and it's taking time but it's taking time because um, <laughs> I haven't assigned this new material and this is like, this is very noisy, that's why it's rendering so quickly. For my render settings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to somewhere like that. And if you take a region here, I'm just going to do a region like this. Actually, let's make it small because it's going to take a while to render. Now you can see this is, you know, it's rendering, but it's taking time. And it's going to look nice. There'll be a lot of detail coming in here but it takes time to render this. So you can also take this simple velvet material here, okay, and you can assign this to it. There you go. You can assign it, and you can render. And it'll render fast because all it's got to calculate is the lighting details. So in this case, this isn't going to work. This is, you know, a feature so far, and da, da 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 and it's rendering. But the point is, is it will render much quicker. And if what you're doing is a chair in a scene, and you've got a whole scene, does this work? Yes, it works. Great, use it. Don't confuse things and be adding in lots of detail. But if you need to add in detail, if you need to make photorealistic velvet, then you need to be thinking with the different properties of the material. And that's the point of this tutorial. If you think of the properties, properties of the material, 
How do you put it together? How's it all going to come together? Then that's what you, you need to be thinking with. That's what you need to be creating. And that's what we're creating here with photorealistic velvet.